God is still in the business of setting the captives free. God is still in the business of liberating the oppressed. God is still in the business of healing the sick and healing the broken hearted. God is still in the business of restoring things, restoring time, restoring relationships. Is someone learning now? God is still in the business of empowering destinies supernaturally, placing graces upon destinies, placing anointings upon destinies, opening up doors, revealing people, bringing them to their prophetic season. He did not stop. He's never stopped. He's still in the business of setting the captives free. He has never stopped. He still is in the business of liberating people, opening up closed doors, prison doors. God is still in the business of answering the questions that have plagued men and families. Questions like, will this ever end? Answer, surely there is an end. Surely. He didn't just say there is an end. He says, surely, certainly there is an end. That means reproach can end. That means shame can end. Is someone hearing me? That means delay can end. That means stagnation can end. God is in the business of ending everything that is not of God. I like what the Bible says, that the later part of Job's life, if you never read Job chapter 42, you will hate the story of Job. It will portray a very bad picture of God. But I like 42 and verse 10. The Bible says, God turned again. He restored. He turned again the captivity of Job. He turned again the captivity of Job. He's turning again the captivity of someone in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, turn again our captivity like the streams of the south or the streams of the Negev. It is possible to sow in tears today, but it is also possible to reap in joy. God is still in the business of changing destinies. God is still in the business of opening new chapters. A new chapter means new story. A new chapter means yesterday is gone forever. Are we together? Yes. The beauty of a movie is that it is progressive. There is no movie that has one scene forever. That is not even a movie in the first place. No matter what bad happens within a movie, your consolation is that there are other scenarios programmed that will be consoling. Are we together? The beauty of a book is that there are other chapters that you have not read. So no matter how bad the current chapter you are reading is the consolation. And sometimes when you are too afraid, you go back and check the name of the book. The name of the book gives you an idea of how the book ends. If you are reading a book that says season of victory and you are reading and you are in a page where there is chaos and darkness and gloominess, you find consolation that the name has already predicted the end. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. That's someone's testimony. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. One more time. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Turn it for good. God is still in the business of giving new body organs, new body parts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. God is still in the business of opening career doors. The matters that affect life and godliness. God is not just interested in the matters of godliness. The matters of godliness talks of spirituality. You're knowing God. You're growing spiritually. The health of your prayer life. But there are matters that pertain to life. Your children's school fees. Matters that pertain to life. Your promotion. God is benevolent enough to spread his power. To cover solutions across all grounds. 
Don't just focus on receiving answers to the matters of spirituality and godliness and leave the matters that pertain unto life. The Bible says, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Life and godliness. That whilst you are loving Jesus, serving him, your spiritual life on fire, your prayer life on fire, he's also sorting your finances, opening doors for you, taking away shame. You are a better portrait of a Christian when the matters of life and godliness are sorted. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. So there are many believers who feel guilty opening up their hearts to receive answers as pertaining matters of life. Because somehow we have indoctrinated ourselves that when you start crying for things, I know that our, our work with God should not just be based on things, but God is a benevolent father. And I have taught you the character of fatherhood is that you want to see your children happy. If you being evil, know how to give good gifts. God does not give bad gifts. Good gifts. There are people who already have money. There are people who have the matters of life sorted. Their children are doing well. Are we together? Their lives, their corporations are doing well. Their major problem are the matters that deal with godliness. They are prospering. Everything is working well. They are like the rich fool for want of word. As far as the matters of life is concerned by God's grace, they are sorted. But it is at the expense of their spiritual life, their prayer life, their love for God. You are welcome to this miracle service because God can bring that balance. He can plant a fire that you should not just be a prosperous unbeliever, an intelligent unbeliever. You can encounter God. He can sort your prayer life. He can sort your word life. Are we together? He can plant something upon you. Fire for the things of God. That brings balance. You become a better portrait of a Christian when that happens. But let me tell you the truth. For most people, especially most people gathered here tonight, Fairly so, we have done well as far as pressing for spirituality is concerned. Most people here, I presume, and I'm safe to do so, that you are doing well spiritually. You love God. There's always room for more. Most people love God. They don't have a problem fasting. They don't have a problem praying. They don't have a problem studying the word of God. They don't have a problem with the house of God. But the spirituality is being greatly interrupted because there are many things as far as the matters of life are concerned. House rent or house. Children's school fees. Huh? A vehicle, mobility, food. And let me tell you the truth, a responsible God and a responsible ministry must stretch to allow the power of God attend to the needs of people on both sides. Are we together? Yes. You will never have your spiritual life robust and healthy and then I do not care whether your children are doing well, whether you are making progress, whether you are being promoted. You are 20 years in a corporation. You are not promoted. It is, it is God is concerned and I am concerned too. And in the name of Jesus, there has to be an answer over that situation tonight. The Bible says, Hitherto you have asked for nothing. It says, Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Joy may be full. Genesis 21 and verse 1. Now Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Bible says, oh Genesis 24 verse 1, my apologies. Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Bible says the Lord had blessed him in how many things? All things. All things. All things. The matters of life and the matters of godliness. I'm saying this to prime your faith so that you don't just choose one, you can open your heart for all. Lord, as you're causing me to love you, let my finances also give me room to worship you well so that my worship is not cut short by worries. You take what the enemy meant for evil, you turn it for good, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'll share with you a few kids now. I will give you four of them and then we begin to pray. And please be sensitive whilst we receive these keys because the Bible says 
And as he taught them, the power of God was present to heal. I want you to be determined tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that you will walk away out of this place with a spiritual souvenir that it must be evident. You know how you go for a wedding or a birthday party and then you pick your own. Only that you don't need to fight over anything. Your own has, has your name on it. So it's not like it's kept there and then you come and fight yourself. You know how people do it at weddings. You carry this, hide this, then put your own, then put the extra food. No, this one has your name. So anybody that carries it, you can tell him, no, it is El Shaddai serving. I've taught you about El Shaddai. El Shaddai means the multi-breasted one. That means he does not have to victimize you to bless me. He can bless all of us and he's still sufficient. There are times that when you are serving some people who have to wait until you are done serving others, then you come to them, not El Shaddai. At once, he visits everybody. He can give someone outside a testimony, someone within the overflow testimony, someone connected from across the globe. At the same time, this is what makes him the Shaddai. And in the name of Jesus, may he move over us. Amen. Shout a believers, amen. amen. Number one, the first key is a reminder. Then we'll build on the remaining three keys. The first key to really receiving from God at a service like this is to learn, and I've said it here, but let it be a reminder, a reminder tonight that all lasting help comes from God and God alone. You will think this is very simple, but it's a reason why many people do not receive. All lasting help. I didn't say all help. All lasting help. Satan can simulate a semblance of help. Men can try to be your source and quite honestly, they can seem to provide some help and succor momentarily, but all lasting help, that means all lasting healing, all lasting deliverance, all lasting breakthroughs comes from God and God alone. Psalm 121 verse 1, God and God alone. God and God alone. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help. Verse 2, it says, my help cometh. My help cometh. My help will not remain there. My help is on its way. My help cometh, but it comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. Someone shout from the Lord. It matters where the help comes from. Don't just say I've received help. Where did it come from? If that help came from a herbalist, you are still in trouble. If that help came from men, you are still in trouble. If it came through men, it was correct. If it came from men, through men means they were channels. From men means they are the source. Every source that is not God is limited. It dries. Every source, I don't care the arrogance of the source. If it is not God, it will dry eventually. And sometimes it will dry just when you need it most. That's why the Bible says, vain is the help of man. God moves through men, but help does not come from men. Learn this. God moves through men, but help, lasting help, lasting help comes from God and God alone. Is someone hearing? Very important. In Psalm 60, 11 and 12, Psalm 60, 11 and 12, give us help from trouble, shout amen. For vain is the help of man. Verse 12, it says, Through God we shall do valiantly, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. I'm telling you sincerely, and I'm saying this from the knowledge of scripture, the privilege of mentorship and experience, lasting help comes from God. Let no man claim to do for you what only God can do. Even if they are sincere, they are still liars. Men do not lie because they are bad. They lie because they are limited. They do not have the wherewithal to keep their word true indefinitely. Integrity is a product of power, not just intention. It takes power to remain true for a long time. So there are many people who promise you, if you are in trouble, just come to me. They are sincere, but they are liars. Because they also derive their help from someone. The person who helps, the person who wants to help you, if he does not help him, have you come to someone who said, I, I, I sat, last week when I spoke, I was still a commissioner, but unfortunately I didn't know that in two days they will remove me. So that thing I said I would do for you, I am sorry. 
with respect to performance he's a liar not because he's bad but he does not have the wherewithal it is only God that has the power to keep his word for a long time so when it looks like you're a person of integrity is because you have derived that strength from him are we together all lasting help comes from God let no man fool you I know that many of us here have uncles and aunties and bosses and superiors and spouses and children and parents various men in our lives who have the means for now that we see and we desire and many of us are hoping that as I pray I will call their names and force them to come to you I'm sorry to disappoint you they will still help but take your eyes away from any man and look unto Jesus the Bible said looking unto Jesus when you look unto Jesus, give him the liberty of selecting who helps you. When you don't have expectation from men, there is no disappointment. Disappointment is when you expect Uncle A and Uncle B and Uncle C will be the person. If Uncle A gives me 5 million, Uncle B gives me 5 million, Uncle C gives me 5 million, that's 15 million. Father, give this man no rest and God says, I don't work that way. The whole 15 million is coming from Uncle Z, who you do not even know. That one comes by my power. And I do it in a way to glorify my name in your life and help the other people know that if you refuse to partner with God, he still has other men. The reason why many people cannot give God glory is because they have begged men too much to pretend it was God that blessed them. They have begged and begged in secret. They have rolled and bowed to Baal. When they get the testimony, they quote it with church talk. And they come and say, see what God has done. It's a lie. When God does a thing, it becomes clear that this one, it is true that he walks through men. But it becomes the, the character of the testimony is such that you will see the hand of God there. May that be your kind of testimony. I'm saying this because some of you, the reason why you never really receive is because there is a text currently in your phone. See me tomorrow. That's what the man said. So when I say receive favor, it doesn't make sense. There is see me tomorrow. Don't allow your pain teach you who men are. He said, I lay me down and I wait because the Lord sustained me. Is it not when your helper is alive that he can help you? I'm not, I'm not wishing doom. But go on and find out from people who had every evidence. The contract was already signed. It was one more signature left. They started collecting loans by faith with joy in advance. Yet they were disappointed. I made up my mind as a person I would never look to any man. Never in my life. God will use men and I will honor the men that he uses. But I will never look to any man. Hmm. Are you learning koinonia? Don't delete the text. Leave it there. Because some of you now don't know what to do with the text. Just leave it there. God can still use the man. But let it be from God. That from God factor matters to God. Don't come and tell lies and say God just showed up whereas many of us I mean you you fraternize left and right with Babylon and then when the answer came you now take if his finances you may just take small and bring us a bribe no when God moves it becomes clear that this one is the signature of God oh my season has come oh, 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 oh my help has come oh, 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 oh my lifting has come oh, 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 oh my help has come shout it say after me father my eyes are on you listen mean it from your heart if it takes you closing your eyes to say that by this is a deliverance service some of you is why everything god said from january till now has not happened you can do anything because you want to receive help from men 
It is amazing what believers do in the secret. And then they come to church and say, this is what God did. It's a lie. When God moves, it is clear that this one is God. Say it again. Say, Father. My eyes are on you. Shout it. Say, Father. My eyes are on you. Turn it into a prayer in one minute. My eyes are on you for my children. My eyes are on you for this ministry. I cannot rise by my strength. My eyes are on you for the next season. My eyes are on you for my finances. My eyes are on you for the performance of your word. You will use men, but may it never come from men. You will use men as vehicles, as channels, but never my source. Somebody pray. This is your miracle service already. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. Stop frustrating yourself looking unto men. God will use men. When he uses the men, acknowledge them and honor them. But let it be God leading the men to help you. Not you manipulating your way through the life and the spaces of men. That is idolatry. In Jesus name we pray. This is a very powerful revelation. With all due respect, you are a man of God. Stop looking unto men. No. I'm looking on to this person, this person, help, no, no. They looked on to him. When you look on to Jesus, genuinely, it was God's servant that said, God told him, can you look up and look down at the same time? He said, every time you are looking on to men, never claim you are looking on to me. It is true. And it's a human thing to want to look on to men. Because why look up to God who looks far when there is a man who has it close to you? But as close as you are, look at me. Have you tried to send a text to someone who is close to you? And yet that text did not arrive early. The person is close to you. Your phones are even together. You press send and then it did not go early. And somebody from somewhere sent an email and it even arrived before your text. They call it network problem. Am I right on that? So just because someone is close to you does not guarantee that he will be God over your life and then you succeed. It is when God puts it in their heart, then proximity becomes valuable when God is in the equation. Please help those under the anointing. Proximity, listen carefully, becomes valuable when God is in the equation. If you tear a zinc and bring someone who is sick and Jesus is not there, there are many troubles you have caused. You will fix that zinc. You will suffer from many people and return back disappointed. Proximity is only valuable to men when the God of the Bible is there. But I tell you for as many who will choose to look unto Jesus tonight, my God will surprise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have met extraordinary miracles and manifestations of God's grace and help in my life from unexpected sources if i were given the liberty of designing the arrival of my blessings i would fail woefully did you hear what i said if i was given the liberty by god that means if god said my son as as my law for you choose how you want your blessings to come i would have frustrated my own growth myself because it's when the blessings arrive you will see the wisdom that brought them that you never would have imagined how it would have come they looked unto him. Is someone learning? Please sit down. This is how God delivers people in a miracle service. You hear this one word now, you can go back and return. For some of you, when you return home, you take some five minutes to repent. I have made you too small in my eyes, oh Lord. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie That you are unable to help me But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong Heal my heart and show yourself strong And in my heart and with my song Oh Lord, 
be magnified oh lord be magnified that's your own miracle service who told you god cannot give you a house who told you god cannot pay rent you are calculating what is in your account unfortunately it doesn't work that way who told you god cannot give you visibility who told you God cannot sort the shame? You are owing. You are not the first to owe. You remain thinking like that. That debt would depress you. There are people who have owed to the billions of dollars God brought them out. Shake away that doubt and believe God tonight. Apostles, because you don't know my problem, let me tell you the truth. I submit to you not to insult your pain, but there is nothing happening to you that is happening for the first time. The Bible says the thing that is, is the thing that was. And it's the thing that is to come. The things that are written aforetime, time. The pain that was written aforetime, time. The limitations, the defeats, the weakness. Written aforetime time is for our learning. So that we through patience and comfort of scripture might find hope. Be magnified. Oh Lord. You are highly exalted And there is nothing you can do Oh Lord, my eyes are on you Be magnified Oh Lord, be magnified God for you when he takes the stage and begins to lead you you will watch with wonder your own life then you will know that he's the one leading you and you will see the glory that comes out of such a life it becomes clear that this one bar is the hand of God I don't know why I'm staying here to press it this uh, this is what God wants to deliver someone from unbelief the truth is we don't trust God. We think we do. It's a lie. We trust rich people. Huh? We trust gatekeepers. And it will flow through them. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying the dynamics is always from God. If you miss that, you have turned into idolatry. Affect my life. Breathe on me. I look to you for life Affect my life Breathe on me I look to you for life Affect my life Breathe on me Lord I look to you for life Affect my life For someone you came to church tonight to repent from idolatry you have pinned your uncle's picture everywhere in your house shouting day and night this man will not sleep you are joking god is not that wicked the man is praying over his own life give me sleep and you are in your room praying and say he should not sleep if you were god which one will you answer the man is asking god you are my lifter give me sleep and someone else who should be looking on to Jesus, you are looking on to the man and say, God, wake that man, he will not sleep. Abba, look on to Jesus. I'm telling you, God is speaking to someone here. Apostle, there's this contract, so there's this senator. His things are already working. Let me advise you, my dear businessman, I don't mean to insult your experience. Drop that phone contact drop your contract on the ground and say Lord if you do not help me help cannot come from anywhere and watch the God of heaven you see this is what makes men is what leads to human worship because when you show men if you don't help me I'm dead it's a lie it's an insult on the power of God it's the reason why when the miracles happen tomorrow they look at you they say I made you who you are and if you don't bow to me this way I will punish you but not God. When God lifts you, you have peace. You owe every man thanks, not worship. When God lifts you, you owe the man he used thanks. And then you owe the God who used them worship. But when men become both your source and the vehicle, they don't want thanksgiving alone. They want worship.
Are you getting how it works now? When God becomes your source, then the only thing you owe men is deep honor and gratitude and never fail to do that. But when men become your source and the only thing you come and tell them is thank you, they say you are joking. Thank you for what? For being God? No, you don't thank God alone. You worship God. And if a man becomes your God, then you are forced to both thank and worship him. May I never worship any man. The three Hebrew boys told Nebuchadnezzar, he said, oh king, matter of honor, we will give you honor. Matter of gratitude, gratitude. But when you come to the realm of worship, you have touched an area that is beyond your jurisdiction. Our God can deliver us. Is someone learning? Number two, let's hurry up. Do you know this already is someone's, is someone's miracle? This is what you came to church to learn. Let God choose the men that help you. You can honestly talk to him. Lord, I know you can use this man. However, let your will be done. And God will say, because you trust me enough to use both the men you know and the ones who do not, you do not know. If Abraham were to choose the person who will prosper him, he would not choose Abimelech. But it was Abimelech God used to give him great gifts. Two, what is the second key? Let me recap that number one, you must know and burn it at the back of your heart that all lasting help comes from God and God alone. From God and God alone. Number two.